Real black people look nothing like this guy who's probably never had a black friend in his life, I can tell by his flannel and his hair, but he'll take the white attention he received in exchange for his dignity. To the final point about the, the exchange for dignity, the saddest part for me along this mini-series is that I knew what game had to be played, so to speak. Hello and welcome back to the Late Onicles channel! It is I, I am he, the Leighton in question, and today we're going a bit off the path with a video topic that I didn't think that I was going to be doing anymore because, uh, as you may or may not know, I had a mini-series talking about a uh, hit phenomenon, the book uh, White Fragility. I wanted to uh, put out my thoughts, feelings, analysis, critiques of this phenomenon. At a point the video hit like 3,000 views, at which point it became the most watched video on my channel. So I was like, okay, the video's plateaued, great, it was only for me anyway. However, around uh, the holiday period, a certain level of pop-off started to happen. I went from a point of averaging around 80 views a day to averaging around 2,000 an hour. So, you know, quite a substantial increase, all at the hand of Mommy Algorithm, both blessed and cursed by Mommy Algorithm. As you can imagine, uh, it brought in quite a few unfamiliar faces, most of which, hello to you probably, uh, very happy to have you on board. However, the thing about the YouTube algorithm is you don't get to control who does and doesn't see the thing, and so that led to a certain thread of comments that I uh, caught sight of that I wanted to discuss with you today. So to the new viewers, there will be a bit at the end for you, but as I say, there was a small but vocal minority that had a particular theme in its comment that they left. To run through it with you, let's see if you can put your detective glasses on, switch on your 200 IQ brain, and let's see if you can spot the theme, spot the trend. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! You're not black, bro. Come on, man. JK. Additionally, this man is Indian, not African black. Additionally, are you wearing blackface? That one is actually quite funny. And then uh, finally, for the introductory slew of comments, uh, all in caps, you are not black, quit lying, and then what can only be described as a gratuitous amount of laughing emojis. Nothing is that funny. But this, dear viewer, is but the tip of the iceberg. And so I welcome you, I implore you to come along with me in going through some of these comments. Fear not, there will be a narrative arc also. I'm not just going to be finger wagging at comments. However, uh, the point of this video hopefully is to turn some lead into gold. Hopefully we'll have some fun discussion. Uh, hopefully there'll be some yuck yucks along the way. And hopefully, you know, we can indulge this together because some of these, bro, some of these have a bigger plot twist than a Korean drama, bro. So, you know, we'll start off small, we'll go to the bigger, more grandiose uh, versions of this comment and we'll come out the other side together. So, the first variety of this comment seemingly pertained a lot to my hair, which I thought was strange. There was a split. More good than bad. Some of you thought I looked like an anime character, Dragon Ball character, a Yu-Gi-Oh character, etc. Which is great. Big thumbs up from me. However, some of you were none too pleased, shall we say. One comment is such that it reads, an actual black person responds, looks at hair, nope. Another one, you're foolish if you believe a black guy who perms his hair, lol. First of all, punk. How are you going to call me foolish and you're going to use the wrong your? Second of all, hello? Yes, Cat, Cat Williams. No, not that one. The other one. He he hello, Cat Williams black person with permed hair. Apparently you're not trustworthy because of your particular hairstyle. Third of all, and this is the kicker, my hair's not even permed. How is, how are we, my voice just broke. How are we in the 21st century and motherfuckers don't know what a blow dryer is? 
You know, me and you, bro, comment, lever, whoever this is, me and you could have been buds, you know what I mean? We probably both put coconut oil in our hair. We're the same person, you know what I mean? Am I talking about the coconut oil in a literal sense? Is it figurative? It's our common humanity, bro. Also, even if my hair was permed, and this final comment in what can only be referred to as the hair trilogy reads, what the fuck is a person of color but a person who doesn't want to be black unless it comes with light-skinned benefits? You are stupid and so is your hair. Slight caveat to the final bit. Agree on the dumb hair, dumb personality, dumb brain, etc. However, did you even watch the video? Like, that has been my point entirely in this uh, conglomeration that is the acronym person of color. I identify as black. My issue is entirely that I don't identify as a person of color because for the third time in a row, broken record gang, it's as though you're saying in regards to you can either be white or a person of color, that's like saying you can identify as blue or every color that's not blue. It's dumb, it's obfuscating, it's white people here, everyone else there, your identity erased. How are you going to call me stupid? And the point that I'm making is going to go entirely overhead. Like a high kick. What are we talking about, bro? You know what I mean? You guys are <laughs> dumb. Like, actually fucking dumb. Moving on to the uh, next saga of comments. There seemed to be a small but vocal minority of people that had an issue with uh, me mentioning that my mom was white. First one. This guy just doesn't understand the book. His white heritage is so fragile, it's fighting against the truth. It's simple, internalized oppression, and his black and white DNA are fighting. I hope he stops being so confused and finds his way to freedom through social justice. I hope you stop being so confused. What are we talking about? This is pretty woo-woo out there. Like, I am, um, like, my body is the locus of my ancestors fighting eternally within me. Like, my my white side is just, like, wakes up every day, just, like, jazz to oppress the black side of me. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> Skin tone, chicken bone, leave me alone, head oh, oh, <laughs> yes. oh, you. Another comment pertaining to this, this issue of white mom whatever. Oh, I knew it all. I kept watching. You have a white mom and girlfriend. I knew you. We're a swirler. You keep defending white people. Me makes a video critiquing white person. You, you keep defending white people. What are we talking about? Swirler, that's a term that I hadn't heard before. Did a did a nice Google of that. So that was fun. Also, because part of the thread in this is, is is this kind of proclivity of we don't have to listen to you because you're not you're not a true black. You don't have a true black experience, whatever that means. If this person had to wait until the fact that I revealed that my mom was white to know that I was uh, mixed, in terms of like optics or just generally how people would. Uh, perceive me off rip wouldn't that confirm that i have a black experience whatever a black experience means like where are these same people when like obama was being elected like they were sat there like oh yes our first biracial president next time hopefully we can get a black one it's like no he was just accepted as such but now because you don't like the things that i'm saying i'm not black Super knuckle, knuckle, bill, buckle, banana, truffle head. <laughs> and then the final bit that I suppose I want to mention briefly, uh, there's a final comment, it's quite long, but from here I'll use it as the as the, the jumping off point for the, the narrative arc of this video, because I didn't want to just uh, finger wag at people. The final comment reads, I can't bro, you are no doubt educated and half black, but you are not an example of a real black American. You're not a real black American. I know that, I'm British. You're not a real black American. You obviously don't want to admit that your worldview has been shaped by your white side, just by the way you dress and talk. First of all, let's, let's break that bit down on the way I dress and the way I talk. In the video that the comment was left on, I'm literally just wearing a black jumper. And I doubt they stayed until the end and saw the little dance that I did. And if they did, all I'm wearing then is literally just jeans and socks. 
Do I further lose black points in this video too? Because again, I'm wearing a black jumper. Or does it not count because it's the, the Miles Morales uh, black Spider-Man one? Uh, did I wear this intentionally to reify my identity as a black person? Or did I, uh, too, just want to bask in the, the exaggerated, exaggerated swagger, swagger of a black, black teen. teen? It gives me goosebumps every time he does it. This is your brain on ID, Paul, bro. Mans can't even wear clothes in his own house without being called white. What are we talking about? And then secondly, pertaining to the way that I talk, I'm literally just British. Not talking about your Oliver Twist accent either, I'm talking about your choice of vocabulary. How is Mans in the 21st century, in the 21st year, and still pulling the you talk so white card. Are you fucking mad, bro? You're weird, exclamation point. But I will say this, that despite your education, white mom, white girlfriend, white vocabulary, oh, he just outright said it, bro. You know that you will never be white, and that probably bothers you and has attributed to your weird hair and body language. Does this person work for the FBI? They know about body language now. That's crazy, bro. I feel like the worst part about this comment to me is that, and presuming that this is a black person, although it could be a white person speaking on a black person's uh, behalf, who knows? But this person, as far as I'm aware, basically just snitched on themselves because they are outlining what their perceptions of black people are or what blackness is. And it essentially boils down to not being able to wear jumpers. <laughs> and not having a good vocabulary or having a poor vocabulary. I don't know. And as far as I'm concerned, this person snitched on themselves. Like, this is the kind of person to play Among Us, kill someone and say, yeah, I did it. Of course, the common thread to the uh, astute of you watching and listening is that the critiques fall from a standpoint, a theorization known as standpoint epistemology, which is the kind of critique that is such that it's not necessarily engaging with the argument that you make, but it's more so engaging with the argument by dismissing your positionality. So for instance, we can't listen to this person because they represent X or what they say isn't valid because of their positionality in Y. None of them actually speak to what I've been talking about, but this is entirely one of the points that I was making, this idea of race essentialism. There is the white world, there is the black world, never do the world's meet. What is the point in having the generations before us fight for the freedoms that we have and supposedly want if those freedoms are restricted? Because it's like, uh, no, no, monolith for you, monoculture for you. Like, w we can't even wear a black jumper without being called uh, white. If you wear plain black jumpers. And you ain't black. Going through the comments, because I spent an awfully long time on the comments. I really care I really appreciate the the stories uh, and responses that you gave to me a lot. There was a point where I spent uh, like six hours just replying to comments. One of them, I literally spent like 45 minutes responding to. I really care about the engagement, the discussion, etc. Uh, and one of the comments that I stumbled upon, it was a, a reply to me that read, they accuse us of trying to be white or to have internalized white supremacy. <laughs> They basically got an answer for any critique. It's very difficult to talk to people who submit to this theology. And that just about uh, sums up my um, response to this. It's like, if you're going to engage with what I'm saying, do it uh, honestly, I suppose, rather than this, we don't have to listen to this person because X or Y. And then finally, hopefully transitioning into the, I suppose, the narrative uh, arc of this uh, video. This comment reads, uh, real black people look nothing like this guy who's probably never had a black friend in his life. I can tell by his flannel and his hair but he'll take the white attention he received in exchange for his dignity. Again, like I feel like this comment is very dismissive to a lot of the people of color. The black people um, that actually responded to my video and uh, resonated with it, they felt seen by it. But to the final point about the, the exchange for dignity, the saddest part 
for me along this mini-series is that I knew what game had to be played, so to speak. And I think I ditched this after the first video, hopefully, I think. And it was the part where I forfeit my identity markers in order to, in order to be, I suppose, like, let into the conversation. Because I knew entirely what this arena is. Like, it's a very identarian one. So, for instance, I forfeit that I grew up in a lower-class family, that I grew up in a council housing, that I was the first of my family ever to go to university, for all intents and purposes, lower socioeconomic um, indicators, let's say. Because I knew that this was the kind of arena that for some people they expected a dynamic that essentially went like this. Say the line, Bart! I'm impressed. Yay! I think the worst part about this is that I think black people can sometimes struggle with uh, identity. Certainly if they're in, let's say, white majority uh, countries or, again, because of the diaspora, uh, they're not necessarily inculcated within African culture, whatever. But stuff like this doesn't help at all. This proclivity to, like, push out people as though they're, like, heretics or something. Like, for instance, back in the day, uh, Childish Gambino, Donald Glover, he had a bar that talked about how he's the only white rapper that's allowed to use the N-word because this spoke to a culture that spoke about him as, oh, no, no, you can't be a real black because you're kind of nerdy. Conversely, Earl Sweatshirt had a bar about being too black for the white kids and too white for the black. Uh, Kelly Stamps, fellow YouTuber, had a video back in the day because people were calling her an Oreo. This is an Oreo. This is a human which you should not consume. And then, even like a couple weeks ago, I watched a video by someone called Not Even Emily talking about how people on her Asian side, so to speak, were calling her a, a banana, which is someone that's yellow on the outside, white on the inside. It's annoying that some of the words that come out to describe uh, people like this are so funny. Oreo, banana, they're kind of hilarious, and that's just the duality of man. I'm sorry. I don't think this proclivity, this phenomenon of you're not X enough, you're not Y enough, I don't think it's purely a black thing. I don't even think it's purely a race thing. I imagine it's something to do with just like a greater tribalism to kind of like uh, exile the people that don't fit to the uniformity. You're not this enough, you're not that enough. And I feel like it comes kind of like reflexively to people that are somewhat insecure about their own identities. Because I know I definitely did this uh, back in the day, like, wow, you can't name off all 151 original Pokemon in order? You're not a real Pokemon fan. That's my identity. I'm a Pokemon fan, and therefore you can't be- it's like, dude, there's enough space for everyone. You know what I mean? Because it's not like this issue is new. In fact, I stumbled across an old uh, episode of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air where part of the plot is that Will and Carlton are trying to get into a black fraternity and uh, there's a dynamic that seemed as though Will was going to get into the fraternity but Carlton wasn't. And so Will reads this before Carlton does and so he kind of confronts the fraternity leader after the leader has said that Carlton is supposedly not our type. Will asks... What do you mean, not our type? Well, Carlton is not like you and me. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't know what you're saying. Not too long after that, Carlton uh, realizes what's happening, and so then he confronts the fraternity leader and says, Being black isn't what I'm trying to be, it's what I am. You said we need to stick together, but you don't even know what that means. If you ask me, you're the real sellout. And then, rather than ending on a, on a big laugh or anything like that, Uncle Phil says, When are we gonna stop doing this to each other? And that is just how the episode ends. There's no big laugh or anything like that. It's pretty much said as though he's asking us, the audience, when are we going to stop doing that to ourselves. That episode came out in 1993. For all intents and purposes, that episode is older than I am. The actor that plays Uncle Phil is literally dead, and we still don't have an answer. So, rather than waiting around for potentially another 30 years, 
I'm just taking it. Am I surprised that this is still happening? No. Am I angry? No. I feel a sympathy for the kinds of people that speak and think like this because I understand that whilst it's true that people have ideas, sometimes ideas have people. It's not necessarily their fault. I will say this is entirely why I can't get on board with like the platitudes of social media. It's always diversity and inclusion, but then when push comes to shove, it's, oh, not that kind of diversity, not that kind of inclusion. Very quickly, y'all niggas turn into some fucking reptiles, snakes biting their own tail. And I'm not, uh, I'm not with it, broski. To the people that conceptualize uh, black identity or blackness like this, um, to me, that's, that's gone with the wind. That's ethereal, you know? That's not in your hands. If somebody giveth, somebody else can taketh away. Whereas for me, my identity, whatever that means, that's permanent. So I'm going to continue liking the things that I like, being inspired by people, whether they look like this or like that. And I uh, implore you, dear viewer, to do the same. And to the kinds of people that think that blackness is externalized, whether it's in the hair or the clothes or vocabulary, my blackness will never and can never be taken away by anyone. The same cannot be said about you. And there you have it, folks. <laughs> there you go. Um, I hope that was something. I really appreciated the support on the mini series that I did. I was really happy to hear uh, the stories that you shared, the thoughts and feelings that you shared. If you're all interested in watching that, they'll be on the end cards. So you can watch the, the, the full thing because let's be honest, we're in a pandemic. You've got time, bro. Uh, you can just watch the, the whole thing if you please. However, if you just want to watch the, the cap off, uh, the final bit, you can also just watch that by itself and probably have enough, hopefully. I do kind of feel like this topic of race has uh, hijacked the channel a little bit, which is kind of uh, ironic or something, because, you know, the channel's mine. I'm the only one in control of the channel. So to say that it's been like hijacked is kind of strange, but I actually do want to do different things. So this topic is now put to bed, I think. Um, as I said, I'll probably visit it at some point, but it's not going to be the bread and butter. So, you know, come for the topic, stay for the personality and the jokes, hopefully, because I'm trying to be a renaissance boy. You know what I mean? A renaissance man. I'm trying to do all the things and not have this be my thing. This, the, people do this already. You know what I mean? Summarizing though, do I think that this video is going to stop uh, people making the comments that they have uh, made, not to me. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not talking to the people directly. I'm talking to the abstraction that they represent. Do I feel like those people are going to go away? Not really. Do I feel like I've given a hopefully good enough argument as to why they should stop thinking the way that they should? Hopefully, but you know, we'll see. As with every video that I make, I'll be snorkeling around in the comments, so be sure to leave one please uh, drop a like if you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell if you haven't already. I think that's everything. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you had some yuck yucks. I hope you enjoyed the things that I said, hopefully. Uh, primarily I make these videos for me, so fuck you. I'm kidding. I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> As always, thanks for hanging out with me. I had fun hanging out with you, parasocial relationship game. 100.